Well, hi everyone. This is a video I've been wanting to do for quite a while. If you saw the thumbnail, I made reference to the world's oldest profession. And of course I'm talking about that of a pile driver. There was an archeological site that was recently discovered in Switzerland and it was exposing the 2000 year old piling for a Roman bridge. You could see the pile group here that was at one of the abutments for this bridge. And you can tell here, this is the oak timber pile. And this is typically what they would do is they would sharpen the uh, bottom to make it easier to drive. Oftentimes these pile were made of oak and they would use a wooden plane with an iron blade to shape the piling before driving. This is the location of this site located just to the Northwest of Bern, Switzerland. And the Romans have been driving pile for a very long time. There's a reference here. And I've got links to all these references in the description to this video, but a bridge that was first built around 640 BC that was on timber piling. And this is what they used typically to drive these pile. This is a wooden gantry, it's another view. They would hoist the ram or the weight that was used to impact the top of the pile. And I've seen renderings that showed that this ram was made out of stone. I suspect in the early days, they also used other large pieces of timber to drive the timber pile. Just another view. It's interesting, this one's set up to drive the pile at an angle, which is referred to as a batter, to provide increased lateral stability for the piling. So of course, one of the more famous sites in antiquity where timber piling were used to support a variety of structures is Venice, Italy. Venice, Italy has very poor quality soils, very low strength sands, silts, clays, and the city was built over 1600 years ago. And the soils extend to depths of over 900 meters or nearly 3000 feet. So if you're gonna build anything, it's gonna be on soil. And this is an interesting article, talks about the variety of foundations, timber pile foundations that were used to support the buildings in Venice. And these pile typically range in length from less than a meter or three feet to up to around three and a half meters or 11 and a half feet. And these piling, ranged in diameter from about four inches to 12 inches, and they were typically spaced at a center to center spacing of 18 inches or less. So they were tightly packed. Here's a reference from this BBC article that 14,000 tightly packed wooden piles were used for the foundations of the Rialto Bridge alone, and I'll show you a picture of that. And 10,000 oak timber pile were used for the San Marco Basilica. And these timber pile would have a maximum capacity of around 40 kips or 40,000 pounds. A kip is 1,000 pounds and it's a common uh, unit of measure in engineering, it's particularly for bridge related applications. Modern piling can have, of course, a capacity of hundreds if not thousands of kips. A timber pile today would typically have a capacity of around a few hundred kips. Of course, they are much longer than what was used by the Venetians, limited really to the length of a typical tree. So most timber pile that were used and still used today for various applications are about in the range of 40 to 50 feet in length. So this is a picture of the Rialto Bridge, quite stunning architecturally. And the timber pile have done their job. You know, timber pile tend to be much more stable if they're submerged for their entire lifetime. Most deterioration occurs in the zones where there's successive wetting and drying at the upper portion of the piling. And of course, they can also be vulnerable to attack from uh, various organisms. But uh, the piling in Venice have been submerged for nearly 2000 years and they've done very well. This is a picture of the San Marco Basilica. And this is a view of exposed pile tops in Venice. You can see they're very tightly packed. Another view of a pile supported foundation in Venice. For some of the smaller piling, they drove them with a handheld ram, which is basically a fence post driver. If you've been on a farm or you've had to install a relatively small steel fence post in particular for a wire fence, you would use a ram very much like this. It's just a cutaway view of what these timber supported foundations look like in Venice. And this is a typical soil profile that we have in Venice. As I mentioned, the length for these timber pile foundations are on a maximum length of around 11 and a half feet or three and a half meters. So we're gonna be restricted to the upper soil profile of soft clay silts for the most part. 
So by definition, these are friction pile because the tip of the pile doesn't bear in a hard or dense layer. The left-hand side diagram is a typical friction piling where you get a little support at the tip, but the bulk of the pile capacity is due to side resistance along the pile soil interface. An additional aspect to this pile capacity that was used for these timber pile in Venice is they were driven in such a tight pattern that the pile would actually displace the softer soils and essentially the soils in between the pile would become denser and provide more side resistance to loading for the pile. This is an interesting article about the types of wood that were used for these pile in Venice. They also mention Amsterdam. Uh, the Romans had nothing to do with the pile installation in Amsterdam, but piles are installed under similar conditions. And you can see the distribution of wood types in Venice. They use alder, predominantly larch, oak, elm, and pine. And it's my understanding that oak was hard to come by in this part of the world back then. But of course, oak is known for its strength as well as resistance to decay from either bacterial activity or other organic activity. Here's a load of timber pile on a barge in Venice. There's been a number of renovation projects where additional piling have been installed to essentially replace piles that have deteriorated over time. But these piles have done very, very well over the years. Now in passing here, I wanted to mention that in modern pile installation, you still use gravity hammers for smaller capacity piling. But typically you're going to use vibratory hammers like this one. You can even use steam activated hammers. Certainly more commonly you use uh, diesel impact hammers where initially the ram is picked up and air and fuel, diesel fuels injected into the combustion chamber. And then the ram is released, which compresses the fuel air mixture and ignites due to an increase in pressure. And because of the reaction force, the ram travels back up to the top of the hammer and the process is repeated. So you have a blow to the pile from the hammer ram roughly every second or so with a diesel pile hammer. And in my company, we routinely perform integrity and capacity testing of piles while they're being driven. And this is called pile driving analysis with a pile driving analyzer which relies on the installation of gauges to the pile, strain gauges at accelerometers. We typically use a radio or sometimes cable connection to our data acquisition computer, but we're getting information about stresses in the pile and resistance along the pile sides and bottom during driving. I'm just gonna show you this video here of one of our jobs in the Kansas City area, testing the installation of a driven steel H pile. And this is a view of our data acquisition computer. We're, we're setting it up for data acquisition prior to the test that you just saw. And we're able to get output like this overall resistance along the length of the pile versus pile elevation or uh, it's travel through the ground. We get information about the top and bottom stresses, information about the hammer ram stroke. And then we do signal matching analysis to more accurately compute the total capacity on the pile, again, from both side and bottom resistance, which is the bottom resistance is referred to as end bearing. Side resistance is referred to as side friction. And timber piling was more commonly used for permanent bridge installations for many, many years up until, say, the, the 1930s and 40s. Uh, I recently visited a bridge in Iowa where the new bridge is going to be supported on drilled shaft foundations nearly 150 feet in length, right next to the existing bridge, which is going to be removed, and those old timber pile on the order of 50 to 55 feet in length. Nowadays, you see timber piling used mostly for false work to support a bridge deck during construction, say, until the reinforced concrete cures after placement, then they can strip the forms and the false work. So I hope you found this video to be of interest. I I'm amazed at what the Romans were able to do 2,000 years ago. Of course, their structures have stood the test of time. They weren't carrying the loads that modern bridges carry today, obviously. But uh, for their time, certainly amazing accomplishment. And one thing I want to point out is I'm sure that the Romans employed observational type engineering where they had 
many failures leading up to their successes. So they experimented with pile lengths, spacing, pile diameter, observed how much load could be applied to these foundations without a problem. And over time, were able to get a good idea of what worked and what didn't work. And of course, the Romans were extremely interested in quick uh, bridge installation to support their military actions throughout the region. So a lot of times these technologies are developed as part of a military application. So let me know what your thoughts are in the comments section. With that, I want to send a shout out to those of you who have contributed to buy me a coffee. That's one of the better ways to support this channel. I also want to thank the channel members who typically preview these videos one or more days prior to them being made public. And I also want to thank those of you who have contributed to Super Thanks. So stay tuned for future videos, everyone.